Hey guys, uh, Shane here, or Land 67 uh, Time for another update, or not another update, another review um, of another bolt action product. This is the uh, 251-7C um, Pioneer Wagon with the um, Panzerbusch, is this, 41, which is like a squeeze bore. I think I pronounced that wrong, but that was 156 hard, hard plastic resin and metal over one pioneer half track bit of history on the back, painting ideas and what have you so let's have a look so I got, I, this is my fourth, jeez I got four of them now this is my fourth bolt action half track uh, I do uh, have a thing for the 251's, I think they're a marvellous uh, looking vehicle and these are relatively cheap and uh, handy for your bolt action armies as well so we have our decals uh, these are actually pretty good I've, uh, these have rarely silvered on me uh, these are actually printed by World Lord Games I believe so uh, not bad for um, a fledgling company because normally like, the thing that always used to be, like, let down GW was they're absolutely appalling decals they're shit but these are actually very good so off to a good start uh, basic um, instructions, kind of this weird photographic thing. Uh, it's easy to follow. The kit's very simplified anyway. It's designed for like war gaming, so um, it, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, options on MG forty two, some MG thirty four, depending what era. Though I believe if you're using the square, the the, the squeeze bore, uh, most likely you're you're operating post forty two, so you're you're in the era of the MG forty two. Okay, so not really too crazy. So uh, it's four of these. One of them's a flame tour wagon because I'm an asshole like that. So any of you bold action heads will know what I'm on about. You get a little baggie of parts that are specific to make the engineer or pioneer vehicle, which we'll talk about in a minute. You get two sprues, which are anyone who's built the plastic uh, 251Cs, whether it be the standard Hanamag 251C or the uh, command version with the uh, pack, oh, it's called pack 38. Uh, these two sprues will be very familiar to you. Uh, <coughs> vehicle is done in a double hole, so you have your, your basic under hole with fenders built in, then you have the actual true compartment. Very basic, but again, it's wargaming and they look great when they're built up. Uh, tracks are molded in one piece so that's, that cuts down on times and these are actually quite easy to paint they're not as tricky as I thought they would be you have uh, a, um, for the front of the vehicle you have the two mounting hooks for the uh, and then uh, a spool of wire wrapped around it which is cool uh, jury cans, machine guns uh, the uh, tow hitch, the rear mach anti aircraft machine gun mounts so yeah it's a pretty little busy spool and this one then you get, uh, if you don't want to use the uh, the tow cable, you have a spare wheel. Pretty well done. Your two standard road wheels. Uh, your seating arrangement and interior, which you won't be using for this. There's actually a resin replacement that's included in that little baggie, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, this is meant to be an antenna. I would re recommend cutting the antenna off at the bottom of the support mount and using stretch sprue to make a, a more unscaled model. Um, I understand why it's that thick because it's designed for being pushed down on a table so they don't want you to snap it but there's no reason why you can't uh, just add a bit more to it. Uh, you get a, a gunner uh, with two arms, one for an MG34, one for 42. Gun shield, you won't be using him if you're using a squeeze bore. You could, uh, you could um, alternatively of course use this. If you're making a, a, a pioneer platoon and you want this uh, have the squeeze board and two standard transports. Just uh, you leave out the squeeze board. Just mount the MG42 if you would wish. Uh, you have the neon light or the uh, Bosch light. Pretty basic. Uh, I think I could be done better. The helmets. Um, again, these are off shaped. Uh, these look more like pretty thicker helmets uh, and a complete out of scale. What I do is I replace them for uh, Perry miniature helmets that come with their DAC after cord I got from uh, a Facebook trade. 
uh, they look much better and they're much in the scale and I imagine a lot of you have maybe uh, picked up a few of the Perry miniatures in the past so you might have a few spares <coughs> uh, a little bit of tarps, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy, you could always make some more if you wanted out of green stuff so again all in all pretty nice these are very nice kits to put together, they don't, uh, there's no nasty surprises with these um, though there is one new element to this and it's just in this little bag and this is what makes this vehicle the Pioneer variant so you get three resin, large resin blocks of pieces two metal crew members their heads and the parts for the uh, squeeze bore uh, which are cast in metal so you get quite a bit in this so I'll draw your attention to the uh, the element that actually makes this vehicle unique to the other Hanamogs or 251 series which are these assault bridges so these are mounted on to either side of the hull um, and it's a sign that uh, in an assault this could drive straight up to a ditch or an anti-tank ditch more so bridge it and then the vehicles could get over very quickly um, these are molded in one block including the, the mounting pieces a nice little inclusion is actually molded the uh, radio antenna mount onto the side here. You can't really see it; it's kind of hidden under, uh, hidden under a bit of flash. But that's actually meant to be there. So don't remove that. That's actually the uh, radio mount antenna. It's very nice of them that they actually if they, that they actually uh, added that. This will require some little bit of um, a little bit of clean up, especially some tricky um, cast plugs will have to be removed. Um, a bit of burring unfortunately here and there uh, there are air bubbles they're microscopic, you can get away with them and they're just, they look, you can make them look like they're just wear and tear from vehicles going over it but again, pretty nice and here is actually what I think is very cool um, I think you need a bit of landing to make these work properly mind you, but they're still cool nonetheless these are inserts to replace the kit's um, seating arrangement for the troop compartment and uh, they're molded with all manner of engineering and vehicle uh, equipment shovels, backpacks, demolition charges, magazines tiller mine 42's um, various different boxes and gas mask case and even like a captured British um, canteen which is kind of cool if you're, if you're doing a Normandy themed army like a Panzer Lear or a 20, uh, 21st Panzer Divi SS Division so that's the first one. Second one again, more of the same. Uh, rifles, helmets, kind of a rough looking machine gun drum, if you will, or uh, ammo can. Uh, that looks to be demolition charges, tiller mine 42s or 43s, or any tank mines, Panzerfausts, and more helmets. So, like, what they what these will do is uh, these will replace the uh, kit parts and they will actually just sit in like so. I think it uh, work Hang on. something like that nice little it's a nice uh, it's a nice touch I should add a lot of character to the model there is a little bit of pin marks or uh marks here and there but none that a little bit of filling can sort um, and finally you have the gun the gun is in three parts gun shield weapon and then the mount for the vehicle. If you're clever, I'm sure you can magnetize this in such a way where you could switch out the the gun mount for both weapons, which I think you could actually well do. If you put a magnet underneath there, you probably could. So you got the squeeze bore, um, shield, and then you have the two crewmen. One guy operating it, so I, I think he's standing up, sitting, standing up on uh, one of the the seats, the nice detail, a little bit of flash, but again, just run your uh, a few seconds running your hobby blade around will get rid of it. Second guy carrying the small caliber ammunition for the um, squeeze war, pretty nice. And you have two heads, ones with a a peak hat or a forge hat, should I say? And the other guy has have has a standard standard Sturmhelm um, or Sturmhelm, or whatever they're called the German style helmets and the a pair of dust goggles. so yeah pretty nice so um I'll be putting this together in a later video uh, 
and I'll just do a little showcase of all my 251 series. Um, they're pretty nice models actually, they're, they're, they're good out of the box, um, very easy to build and look great in any bold action army or if you're just a collector. Also another little thing from Warlord, I uh, got a couple of paints which I'm going to be using to do, do my uh, P-Dot camo which will be uh, a tutorial coming up very shortly because uh, I know uh, a lot of people uh, are intimidated by SS camo schemes and the P-Dot camo scheme is probably one of the more complicated because it's just the most time consuming and uh, so I'll do a tutorial on that for my uh, my uh, French volunteer SS unit, uh, the Charlemagne Division, or the hell they're called. So that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you, or not tutorial. I sorry, my head's all over the place. This is the end of this um, inbox review. I hope it was useful to you. Uh, happy modeling, happy gaming, and I'll catch you all very soon. Bye bye, and watch out for those buses. Bye.